Welcome to Booze and Glues, a justifiable excuse for two friends to spend time together, cross crafts off their to-do list and, of course, drink. With glue guns and wine glasses at the ready, join Jessie Shepherd and Tabitha Davis as they attempt to simultaneously chat, craft, chug and charm. Will they consume alcohol? Definitely. Will they actually accomplish anything? Debatably. Will they bitch and complain? Inevitably. Will it be a bloody good time? Absolutely. And if things don't turn out just as planned, well, that's okay too. Because... Booze! Welcome to Booze and Glues. I'm Tab. And I'm Jessie. And we're working on stuff. We're making things. We're doing things. I am the only one drinking. It's a bummer, guys. For the next six months, you get sober Jessie. Sober Jessie. Not and that I was ever, Tab. like, drunk, I think, on yeah. these things, but. We haven't ever gotten, like, super drunk, which would be so funny and would have been a great podcast 10 years ago when I could, like, deal with being super drunk yeah. and then functioning the next day. If we weren't recording on Mondays. Right. Well, even then, like, I still have to function. That's true. Every day of the week. You have children and stuff. I don't. Right. You can't get away from, like, being an adult. So that makes it rough to really get totally wasted. Yeah. I got a minute till I have kids, so maybe I should be taking advantage. Well, let's save your liver. Yeah, let's. I'm not going to for six months. Yeah. So I don't know if y'all remember. If you listen to other episodes, I got a TB test and I had a, a positive reaction to the tb test and i got a chest x-ray everything's fine i don't have tb but i could have latent tb so it could be running through my blood and it can like come up at any time like 10 percent of people that have that form of it will it'll be the real thing at some point in life like it'll become active yes that's the word active these are some fancy tools you have by the way they're cool huh Uh uh-huh um my cricket, yeah my cricket tools y'all are they like cricket brand yeah oh. they, came, they came with my machine oh accessories yeah well i have a silhouette and it doesn't come with accessories oh. maybe they do now it probably does I, mine's super old they gotta compete you know mine was like a og version og silhouette i was silhouetting before people knew <laughs> I've I've been cutting things out with my hands for too long. <laughs> yeah, we've been crafting and cutting stuff out with our hands since we were three. OG, OG cutters. Eat that paste. <laughs> you you know didn't. It. You don't like to eat the paste. I was never really a paste eater. Oh, it's, it smells so good. See, I don't think I get that from paste. Like, do you remember the paste that was in the jar with the, like, stick? You unscrewed the lid and the stick was stuck inside the lid? See, I think Jessie's too young to remember actual paste. That could be. Everybody just had glue sticks when she was in, like, preschool, probably. Yeah, glue sticks. We had to work with real paste. And you had to smear it. It was... Man, those were some rough times. (laughs) (laughs) Sounds like you had a hard childhood. (laughs) I was, my boss was telling us about when she was younger and they had like a shared phone line with like their whole street. Right. And so like if you had an emergency, you had to like get on and if somebody was on the phone, you'd be like, I have an emergency. Can you please hang up so like I can call emergency services? Quit talking to your great aunt so-and-so. Yeah. Like my husband's choking on his steak. Yeah, we have real life problems. Yeah, and then the operator had to, like, pull your cord and connect it. That's crazy. Totally. I never lived in those times. Yeah, I do didn't. remember being able to actually talk to an operator. Do you? Yeah, but maybe that's just in my brain. Like, what if I'm just imagining something from my childhood that was in a movie? That could be. I don't know. Anyway, so Jesse's not drinking. I'm not. I'm going to drink enough for the both of us. So... Two beers. I'm on my second beer. Um, She's going real crazy, y'all. I was gonna, I like started to pour a glass of wine, but 
all of a sudden, what are you looking for? What do I do with those scissors? Oh, I probably sent them over somewhere. You didn't do anything with them. Thank you. Um, do you want like a? Oh, you need actual scissors. Okay, because I was gonna say I have like exacto knife things. Um, I'm gonna try to recreate this piece I lost. Is it right here? So tab is the savior. <laughs> I just happened to remember pulling that off and I was like, maybe you have, it's something you need. So I almost poured a glass of wine. But for some reason today, Chico went from being lovely spring, stormy, overcast weather to 70 freaking 8 degrees. Okay. How about let's hear that from a different perspective. So now you heard it from Tab. Now you heard <laughs> Chico is finally out of the clouds and the flooding and the awfulness and is into happy sun without the need for a jacket and happiness. I miss the rain and the storm clouds. I'm loving life. I feel sweaty already and I'm not enjoying it. It's not so bad to be sweaty when you're skinny, but... Like, the heavier you get, the worse sweaty becomes. <laughs> if you haven't seen pictures of us, Tab's like 400 pounds and just huge, so I, she's one to talk. Somebody out there might be 400 pounds, and I don't want you to be offended. <laughs> I'm being sarcastic. She's not 400 pounds. She acts like she's the biggest human on the planet and that she I, just can't handle heat. I am I weigh, like, the most that I've ever weighed in my life, which is different. It's a different experience for me. Okay, okay. Um, I guess I respect that. Yeah. So I'm not like complaining about how fat I am. <laughs> I am well aware that I'm not in the greatest shape. I also kind of don't mind. <laughs> like I'm, I feel happy about Where myself. I don't really care, but it's more that like, you know, I feel like sweat is going to start accumulating in places I didn't used to have. <laughs> so I'm a little concerned about that. No, um, it just was a little warm for, like, a warm glass of wine, you know? Yeah. I was like... We're going to have to move to, oh. White wines. White? But by the time summer's over, that's when I'm going to start drinking, so... Right. And you'll have to make up for lost time. (laughs) I don't know. So, basically, we're just trying to save Jessie's liver because the meds she has to take for TB... Yeah, they're pretty hard on your liver. They're hard on your liver, so. She cannot combine alcohol and these medications. I would really like to not end up with liver disease or hepatitis or something. Oh, for sure. And then also, I mean, let's get to the real root of the problem here. She also can't eat aged cheese. Yeah, I found Which is bullshit. I do way too much research that's probably my problem, but I, so I'm allergic to penicillin, so, like, all antibiotics, every time I take a new one, I just get scared. Sorry. I just get scared I'm going to be allergic to that, too. Right. And so I want to know what all the symptoms are if I'm going to be allergic, and I, so I read a little bit too much, especially if I've got to be on something for six months. It's like, you get on WebMD. Mm-hmm. Get on WebMD. I started searching for stuff, so I found this long list of all these foods I can't eat. And then... Just, like, spinach and cheese, which I have every Wednesday at trivia. Yeah. The the best salad is just spinach and... If I go, like, a month and I'm feeling okay, I might throw some spinach and some cheese into my diet. Is it, like, contraindicated? I don't know what that means. You're using too big words. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry. I work in a doctor's office, remember? (laughs) Um, is it, like, does it conflict with the medication, or does it, like, give you a heightened risk for an allergy? I think it just, well, like, heightened risks for, I think it's more about liver. Oh. I, I think this, whatever, isoniazid yeah. is what I'm on, and whatever it is, it's just apparently really, really rough on your liver. And so, there's something in spinach and aged cheese called tyramine. Okay. I don't even know if I'm saying that right. T-Y-R, I don't even know how to spell it. And uh, T-Y-R-A-M-I-N-E. I okay. do not know how to spell it. And uh, <laughs> even it even said this list said that I if I buy, f- like, fresh fruit or meat or whatever, I need to freeze it or eat it within two days. I'm like, I only go grocery shopping once a week. So it, like, doesn't start to ferment. Yeah. Something, tear means come when it's stuff sits. One, and then it's like, don't eat anything moldy or 
old. I'm like, I don't do that normally anyways. Oh, what, you don't love a good hunk of moldy bread? I don't. You don't just rip it off and start chowing down? <laughs> Actually, natural, natural penicillin. Oh, wait, you're allergic. <laughs> if I'm really hungry and there's a little bit of mold on something, I'll eat it. I'm not going to lie. Well, I don't eat the mold. Well, right. You pick the mold off. Oh, yeah, off. yeah, 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 yeah. I take that part off. But, well, yeah. I mean, if you have a whole block of cheese and there's a little mold on the edge piece, you cut that off. Yeah. What's wrong with the rest of the cheese? I mean, cheese I is know. basically mold anyways, right? That's true. I don't, yeah, I'm, I'm down with that. That's yeah. fine. Cool. But, I, I mean, I'm not going to judge. Y'all can feel free to. <laughs> That's fine. And we don't care. No, I'm still going to do it. I ain't wasting no money. I, I spent money on that cheese. I fly in the face of public outcry. I don't know what the right words are. So, uh, <laughs> anyway. I'm not sure what you're trying to say, but um, okay. You know, when you're like being, um, you know, so for- this is going to be the problem about Jesse not drinking and me drinking is I'm going to sound like an idiot. And I'm going to point it out. Yeah. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, You know, when you're saying, like, you're being just, dis- no, that's not the right word either. You never heard that saying, like, fly in the face of danger or something? Like. No. You're being contradictory? Is that a word? Contradictory is a word. <laughs> I'm not even drunk and I got the hiccups. <laughs> <laughs> yes maybe maybe i should just act like it there you go that should be it should be drunk tab and sober jesse act pretending drunk and i drunk. can just be like extra ordinarily well i i thought for a minute because we joked about huffing glue and i was like maybe jesse should just huff before we do a podcast and then she can be high and i'll be drunk yeah I just. but that might also be bad for your liver i don't know i've yeah. never huffed anything me neither i mean i could just like smoke but i'm not very fun when that happens so that was a nice shot yeah kobe i just made the shot you guys <laughs> i don't want you to just be like bummed and paranoid or anything <laughs> so let's no. let's skip that you know i f- think that it's actually legal now Wh- what's the status on care california Ca- california I, th- I think it's legal but wait i don't think it's legal till june of 2018 or something for like public dispensaries but what about private I know that you have to go through, like, they are setting up all kinds of, like, regulations and you have to get a license to, like, yeah. sell. But what if we're just going to, like, make some brownies? I think that's why it's still still not even legal till next year because they don't have, like, the rules on, like, driving and stuff like that. So. Oh, my gosh. There's lots of stuff that has to come with it. Because, yeah, there's not, like, a test right now. You know, right. To, like, no, and I, I mean, because, y- yeah, you can be driving under the influence of many things yeah and not be tested but since that's legal you gotta have a way to test for it because really people shouldn't be driving on that crap i know there's people where it's like perma high and i'm sure you function normally i've i had lots of friends in college who were just constantly high and you couldn't tell ever yeah well i mean i think the issue is my glasses are really dirty it's almost as blurry with them on as it is with them off i think the issue is that like Say you're high on, like, a prescription drug. Right. And you're driving under the influence and you get pulled over. They can test your blood to see the level of that drug, like, at that time. Right. They don't have that kind of test for marijuana. They could right. test and, like, find the presence of it, but it could have been from... Weeks within, ago. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I can understand that. Yeah. Which well, was smart of them to have had the foresight to know that these, they had things they needed to... These people are harsh in our buzz. Hello, let me get high all the time, y'all. I mean, I, I could have been baking delicious cookies. Yeah. This is coming I from f- two people that don't I don't think do would smoke. marijuana. <laughs> even if... I would never smoke. My, I have asthma so bad. <laughs> so would, that wouldn't be a good idea. I would never smoke. I'm allergic to everything. I mean... At some point, now this is me at, I'm in my 30s. I've never 
done any form of marijuana or cigarettes or tobacco at all. Like, Tab is a good girl. I'm not, but I just have <laughs> never done that. No, not me. I'm not a good girl. I mean, right now I'm probably a good girl. I oh, haven't always been. Dabbled. I've, just, I've never done any kind of like, yeah, drugs or anything really. Yeah. I mean... Besides, like, caffeine and alcohol, which are also drugs, but... And I do love me some caffeine and alcohol. (laughs) Caffeine's been a really big deal at my work lately because in the afternoon, we're all just, like, dead. Yeah. And my boss goes and gets a cold brew, and she's a completely different human. I love cold brew. And then I go... I I don't drink coffee. It makes me feel really sick. You just got to push past that. (laughs) It's going to get I, so good. I don't have time at work to be on the toilet all afternoon. <laughs> and so You have to accustom your body. It's like training. It's like training for a marathon. No. You got to adapt I've, to the coffee. No. See, and I've always been really, like, adamant for some reason. I didn't want to I'm be. I'm drinking a coffee stout yeah, right I now. Don't, I definitely don't do that. But from I never Sierra wanted Nevada, to be dependent. Shout out. You can sponsor us. We live in your town. We love you. We love you. Ken Grossman, shout out. You're great. What up, Ken? Also, if you want to get me a marketing job, I'm okay with that also. Right. Just in she a couple of months, though. She won't dye her hair purple this time. I won't. <laughs> Actually, I don't even know if they'd care. They're a pretty chill company, I think. They are pretty chill. I mean, there's a lot of, like, tattooed people there. Yeah. Hey, and you know what's funny? Now I have the purple hair. You do! Mine isn't, like, yours was, like purple mine was purple it was very purple my doctor today that i was working with told me my hair was mother of pearl color (laughs) when i was like is that a color okay you know like the edges where it's purpley yeah yeah i think that's what he was saying oh that like i call my mom mother of pearls and i don't even know where it came from and everybody always asks and i'm like i don't know what it means i just called her that one day and it stuck like that's what she is in my phone Mother of pearls. Because you and Jake are pearls. My brother's not. <laughs> well. Okay, how do I start edging this bad boy? Oh, yeah. So. We're, we are making crafts today. We're doing crafts. Well, Jesse is. I turned on my iron, but I'm increasingly starting to wonder if I should be handling something so hot. Um, because it doesn't take much, y'all. Two beers is enough for me. Um. Jesse is going to a f- fancy wedding. Is it fancy? Oh, did my mom tell you guys? <laughs> um, I think you told me. Isn't it like black tie? No. Okay. I my mom is really freaking out about this wedding for some reason. Oh, because I think it's a little bit fancier than a normal like weddings that she's gone to. Because well, she did tell me that she tried on a dress, and your dad said. No. He yeah. vetoed a dress. My, he's been doing that lately. She'll, like, oh bring God. home. Yeah, she'll, like, bring home stuff and be like, which one do you like? And my dad will be like, mm, not that one. That one's okay. No, not that one. So he's pretty much like, yeah, neither. that's not going to. Or neither. Yeah, that happens too. So. I am. Which, the one that he, ex- like, said no to. Was in, really bad. In his defense. It wasn't really. It was, like, it was cute and it was really fun, but it was totally different and it probably wasn't like the right one for this occasion. Okay. So it, was, it wasn't like he was just like, nah, I don't like that. It was like, mm, I don't think that's right. I swear if some man, including my dear husband, told me, nope, I would be like, this is the dress. <laughs> <laughs> See, I want. Blake, my boyfriend, to be honest with me, I always ask him, I'm like, oh, I do too, and then I pick the thing that, the opposite of what he says, almost 110% of the time. Really? No, I would totally listen to Blake. And actually, my brother, (laughs) I've always listened to my brother, because he's always, like, I think I'm going to take my mom and my brother wedding dress shopping. Yeah. I don't want any friends. good fashion. Yeah, my brother, and my brother's really, like, honest with me. I take offense to that. (laughs) (laughs) Well, no, I just don't want too many people, like, people no, I bring know. all of their friends and everybody's got, like, an their opinion whole wedding and stuff, party. and, yeah, and I'm too like, that stress. doesn't need to happen, like, no, but my, my two cousins and I went, right, and it was just a nice thing, and it was, like, they can be very honest with me, and right. it was simple, and that was fine. Yeah, which, and that's the other, other thing about bringing your friends, like, how many of them are really that close where they would tell you, like, that's not it, right, you know? And that instead of being makes, like, oh, 
it's your you're beautiful. face look fat. You're so beautiful. You look beautiful in everything. It's like right. no, that's not what I want to hear. No, I want to hear like like your ass looks ugly in that dress. Just no. Yeah. No, I agree. That's that's. Good. And my brother would do that. He'd be like, mm, "That's like he wouldn't be rude, but he'd be like, that's mm, not the best. That's not it. We could find something better." <laughs> And apparently your dad's really good at that, too. Yeah, maybe I should bring my dad along as well. I don't think that's really that appropriate, but... I always ask people for an opinion, and then it's not because I I never listen to other people's opinions almost ever in my life. I always just go with what I think or, you know, feel. I really am not easily swayed by other people. That's great. Usually when I ask someone's, like, opinion about something, I'm using it, I think, subconsciously as, like, a tool to reveal my true thought. Oh, okay. You know? Yeah. Like, you say, I can't decide between these two things, and when someone says this one... It's like it reveals to you that you're like, oh, no, right. I, I really like the other one better. Yeah. Which my I think my boss does that. She'll be like, flip a coin, you know, and then I'll flip it. And she's like, were you disappointed? Right. If you were, then choose the other thing. Exactly. So when I'm like, oh, what shoes look better? And I have two different shoes on and I hold my one leg up. And then he goes, oh, where are those ones? And I like look down and I'm like, mm, I'm going to wear the other ones. Choose the other ones. Yeah. yeah. It's not because I'm, like, just <laughs> trying to be a pain in the ass, but it, yeah, like, it reveals to your inner self what you actually wanted. Okay, um, so Jesse came up with a great idea to... I've always wanted to do this. Etch glass. Oh, yeah. you've never etched glass at all before? No. Oh, yeah. Well, and I've always wanted to do one of these casserole dishes because how great of an idea is this? So cute. I was just about to tell them how great it was. Tell them. Jesse is going to monogram and etch a casserole dish as a wedding gift. Yeah. So when you take your dish to someone else's house, they know where it goes home. Yeah. You don't Nobody have to, like, steals your stuff. And you don't have to like put a piece of masking tape on the back right. with your name on it or something cheesy. Yeah. And it's just totally cute. It's really cute. I told Blake I was going to make one for us. But I told him. You, but not yet. I don't have to remind you what needs to happen for me to make one. Because you don't want it to have to say Shepherd Barstow. Yeah, I'm not going to make a hyphened <laughs> hyphen casserole dish. Well, did I tell you, he wouldn't let me hyphen my dog's last name. Right. He said it had to be Barstow. It had to be Barstow. I'm like, that's not fair. He's half mine. Right. And I ain't no Barstow. Look at my naked left finger. I have a naked left finger and I'm totally married. <laughs> well, look at my naked lack or my lack of... Legal lack of, documentation. Lack of left finger jewelry. I have left finger jewelry. That's I just true. am not wearing it. I don't have left finger jewelry. I mean, I probably could put some on my left finger, but no, but you're saving it. I'm saving. It's, yeah, it's waiting for a that really space is rented. Special bit. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> <laughs> hint, you <know>. hint. <laughs> wink, wink. <laughs> Can you see us winking, Blake? <laughs> also, speaking of us getting married at some point in our lives. I feel like I talk about my boss a lot, but she's a really big part of my life. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you spend a lot of time at work. I do. And she... So, I talk about my doctors, but they're just like nameless, faceless doctors. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of them. I mean, they're not nameless uh, and faceless to me. I love them. Right. But they're nameless and faceless to the audience. Yeah. All four of you. Well, so I... <laughs> I, I, I <laughs> Or one of two of you. Actually, I think our only um, real listener is Brad. Well, my Blake's friend, Matt, you met Matt, listened. His good friend, Matt. Yeah. And okay. he was like, oh, my God, I freaking cracked up the whole time. Oh, great. And I was like, all right. I'm That's awesome. Like it. He told me I was being facetious because I kept introducing him as Blake's good friend, Matt. <laughs> He's like, now I just think you're being facetious. <laughs> Matt is an interesting guy. I was like, it nice, really is cool. Nice vocabulary. <laughs> Because earlier in the evening when I had very first met him, I said I can't even remember what, and he, like, congratulated me on my vocabulary. (laughs) That's such a Matt thing to do. And I was like, I'll take it. (laughs) Such a Matt thing. No, he's great. Thanks for listening, if you're still listening, Matt. Thanks, thanks, Matt. It was great to meet you. We appreciate it. Let's go have a beer again. (laughs) But, so, I work at a, a counseling agency, so they have all these little counseling tools, and... Um, my boss loves the Myers-Briggs personality test. Oh, yes. Like, loves it. Thinks it's... The best thing ever. 
the only way you can I, live your life is knowing what your personality is. I did that like fairly recently in the last year. Yeah. It's they're fun. And so she did mine because she was kind of curious what mine was and I'm exactly the same as hers which we kind of expected. What were you? I can never remember. I'm an introvert. Oh, I I'm like a I feel like I want to just blurt out some letters, but I don't know if they're actually my letters. I wanted to say F N T B. Does that make sense? Some of them F and N are letters. <laughs> T and B. Oh wait, T might. So maybe are you an introvert or an extrovert though? I think I'm an extrovert. So you're probably E N. Maybe that's maybe it's not T- an F. Maybe it's an E. E N T P. Maybe. Okay. Anyway. But yeah, I don't ever remember what you're I am. You're an introvert. I am, which is a little different. And Trish didn't think I would be. She thought I'd be more extrovert, but. Oh, I I can totally see that. Um, no, I can. I think everyone has both qualities. Yeah. You know, there's a balance. Yeah. But yeah, one's like more strong than the other. Right. Because there are definitely times when I'm like, I will sit in my house all by myself and no one will talk to me. <laughs> it's great. It's great. <laughs> but I crave also being around people sometimes. Yeah, and that, you need to do that for sure. Even if you are an introvert, you need the people time. Okay, so real quick time out. Okay. Jessie has got on her fabulous stencil that she made on her cricket. Says Shepherd. And <laughs> that's, that's my last name. It's my cousin getting married. <laughs> it's her cousin's last name. She's not marrying her cousin. No. It's her cousin getting married to someone outside of the family. Yeah. Whose last name is not Shepard, but will be soon. Will be Shepard. <gasps> what if she hyphenates? I don't... I don't know. Too damn bad. Because this says sh- Shepard. <laughs> yeah. If she does, I'm going to say, screw you. <laughs> yeah. Hyphenating is for... People who don't have an awesome last name. Yeah. Or people who have kids. <laughs> or people who have kids. There's Already. reason. There's reasons for hyphenating. Yeah. I actually haven't done anything because I haven't legally changed my name because I'm a loser. But when it's your turn to do that and you have to go sit at the Social Security office for 40 minutes just to walk up to someone who's like, you don't have the right paperwork. <laughs> and then you get to go to DMV and the bank and all the freaking best places on earth. You come talk to me. I'm excited. So Jesse's ready to put on the etching goo. I'm scared, but I'm excited. Armor etch, glass etching cream. New and improved. I don't think it's that new because I've had this stuff forever. I have done many glass etching projects. My friend Callie and I got really into it one year and we just etched everything in our houses. It was hilarious. She does a lot of really fancy stuff. Like she does Christmas gifts. She like etches wine glasses and like goes. Oh. Really fancy, pretty stuff. I've gotten over it. So shake before using. Okay. okay. Good. Armor etch does not etch plastic or some Pyrex. Oh, no. Let's well, anchor. Is that Py- <laughs> <laughs> They didn't have the Pyrex ones in stock. <laughs> so I anchor. It doesn't say anchor. We're good. Okay. <laughs> Except for it um, is pretty much just a glass Pyrex. or mirror with contact vinyl. I'm going to read apparently all the instructions to this. Okay. So you've just got Just in case you want to do it at home and you you've can't read. You've got your deal. You've got your stencil. It's pressed down and taped. I, pressed down. And you know what? It even looks great unlike what you thought it was going to. I just have to say. I didn't think it was going to not look great. I got impatient. I didn't use transfer crap. Oh, I was. And I just I set was, it down and it worked. I was getting really nervous when she had the like plastic held up in her hands and it was starting to catch and stick together. And I was like, why are you using the transfer tape? Because I'm a perfectionist like that. And Jesse just doesn't have quite that much patience. I'm impatient. <laughs> so it's all stuck down. It looks great. It's good to go. She's got a little um, spongy applicator deal. Boom, boom, boom. And then we're, this says... So that's Apply five a minutes thick or something. Layer brushing up and down, then left and right to spread the cream over the entire stenciled area. Let the etching cream remain on the glass for five minutes. The timing is for custom stencils or peel and etch only. Mm-hmm. I sure. thought it was going to be longer than five minutes, but I'm- wash off all traces with ordinary tap water. Remove your vinyl and thoroughly clean with window cleaner. Okay, I do remember doing this, and for some reason, I felt like the rub up and down and left to right was like a vital part 
Because there's like little bits of scratchy stuff in here. Oh. So to like rough those areas. But yeah, yeah, I say just go for it. Cool. Do you want gloves? Sure. I guess I just should because, because you were reading the warning label and it said that you could get severely burned and not know it for several days. It's a little scary. May not be immediately painful. It's like, okay. I'm giving you fancy hair gloves. <laughs> oh, you know what I'm going to do while you're doing that? I am going to do a little bit of crafting. So I'm making my son this. Well, I'm not making a jacket. It's a jacket that we already we have. We already had a jacket. Yes. Um, Can and I just like a, dump this on? Um, I mean, yeah. Just pour some on and then spread it around. So it's a cute jacket, but it's like... It was like a Disney Cars, like the Planes version of Cars. Planes, I guess it's called. I don't remember. Jacket. And my son is about to turn eight, and apparently he's way too cool for such things now. And it's like a cool little jacket, and it's perfect temperature for like summer evening, you know, just like a light jacket. He actually likes the jacket, but he just didn't like what was on it anymore. So... I decided that I would make it awesome. So I bought all patches of all of his favorite movies and stuff. And I put patches on it. So it's got some Star Wars and some Jurassic Park, Ghostbusters patches. and All the most coolest things. Yeah. The best stuff. And I um, I made a, also using my silhouette and cutting out vinyl and junk there's legit like piece of glass in here yeah this is awesome it is pretty cool make sure you cover everything and then like gloop some extra on top but don't go outside of your square i got that okay i'm gonna try and roll hard (laughs) yeah so basically i just cut out like a iron on transfer san francisco giants logo to put on the back of his jacket because i feel like that would really clinch it for him It would make it super cool. He's not going to be embarrassed to wear it no more. Right. So I'm just going to iron that on because I have my iron nice and hot and I'm ready to go. And hopefully this will make him happy and he will be happy to wear this jacket. I, like, remember having jackets that were, like, I don't know, patched together and, you know. Yeah, they all of a sudden become cool and all your friends are like, where did you get that? And you're like, oh, you can't just get it. You can't get it. Like, you have to earn this jacket. (laughs) You have to have a mom that's going to make you a cool jacket, but you can't tell your friends your mom made your jacket. No, no, no. That's not as cool, but. No, I just remember being really into collecting like patches and pins and stuff when I was like probably in like junior high, early high school. And I mean, I have always, I'm like, I like punk and stuff. And so it's like very like punk rocky, you know? Do you remember when like everybody went through the phase of putting safety pins and everything? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So like that kind of deal. So I was like, well, at least I can make him like a legit, like it'll be all patchy and it'll look like punk kind of. And he'll like, he'll appreciate that. So like this, like, do am I done? I feel like I'm just going to need to keep... No, I think you've probably, I mean, you went up and down and side to side. I went up and down side to side. So then I just usually, like, glop some extra on top to make sure it's, like, sitting everywhere really thickly. Oh! Yeah, that'll be thick. (laughs) Yeah, just so it's, like, really thick all the way across. Look at that. Jesse, have you ever seen a San Francisco Giants jacket? So cool. It was freaking awesome. I only left the one patch that, that's because I already did all the hard work, which was cutting it out and mirroring it and doing all the junk. So you get it on there correctly. Todd prepares well. Jesse doesn't. I left this one patch that has a lightning bolt and says, danger. (laughs) Oh my gosh, that's cool. So, and then he's got all the other ones. I think I'm going to try to find like a little skull and crossbone like um, zipper pull and put it on here. Do I start the five minutes right now? Yeah, start the five minutes. Five minutes from now. Anyway, so there. That was my little craft for the evening. I'm like, you have a watch on your wrist. I do probably, I iron these on, but I probably do need to like actually do a little bit of stitching. Stitching on patches is hard though. I kind of want to use my sewing machine, but I feel like I'm just going to bust a million needles. Oh yeah, it's kind of thick. It's really thick, but I definitely need to like stitch in places. I still have a lot of work to do. Nice. 
so cute. You wouldn't, I mean, I would be proud to wear this jacket. It's got all the best stuff on it. Remy's gonna love it. I think you will. Now I'm gonna unplug this iron before I burn the hell out of myself. That's a great idea. Oh, but yeah, so my boss and the personality test. Yeah. So I had taken it before, right? And then that one day she was asking if I knew what Blake's personality type was. And I was like, nah. She's like, okay, you're going to take a personality test. How many are you going to make Blake take it? You know, she's like, and she starts getting like excited, right? She's like, ooh, you guys are going to have so much fun tonight. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, you're hilarious. So I had Blake take it, brought her back the results. She compared like his personality versus mine. And she's like, oh, you guys will do pretty well together. She's like, you're going to have a hard time with decision making because Blake is going to take longer to make decisions than you. But if you can learn how to cope with that, you guys are going to be fine. You know, I'm like, cool. I'm glad to have your your approval. You know, she's like, so yeah, I'm okay. You guys can get married now. I mean, she's legit a counselor though, right? She I mean, is. Yeah, yeah. So she knows some stuff. Yeah. She's what like, is the name of the test again? Myers Briggs. Okay, let me look and see. Maybe if I just search my inbox for personality. Yeah, so she was totally like, okay, you guys can get married. And I'm like, yeah, I'll let Blake know. So I told him, I said, Trish says it's time. Like, we can get married. And he's like, oh, okay. <laughs> I'm glad <laughs> Trish <Thanks>. said yes. <laughs> That's funny. It was It was great. Um, I found, so I had Adam take it, I remember, and I found his. What was his? It's not really going to mean much to me. But... Oh, my personality type is the, the console ESFJ is me. Oh, so extrovert, sensing, I don't remember what F, oh, feeling, and judging. Ooh, I'm judgy. Well, it's not that kind. <laughs> it's not like a bad type of judge. Oh, you know who else is an ESFJ? Who? Uh, Taylor Swift. Oh, hey. What are you doing? I'm trying to like let this like just soak down a little bit. Why? Because there's a little bit that I didn't cover so good. Why can't you just use the spongy thing? Well, because. <laughs> I just look over and Jessie's like hanging her not Pyrex anchor. <laughs> Dish. My, my anchor dash. In the air, letting all the sludge slowly ooze down the face of it. <laughs> I'm like trying to look at what it's going to look like on the other side. Oh, let's see. Oh, I need... Uh, yep, it's hard to see. Okay. Also, Bill Clinton, who is not my friend. Jennifer Gardner. Steve Harvey. Danny Glover. Jennifer Lopez. Sally Field. Tyra B. <laughs> Woo! Hold on, that's not what I'm laughing at. I'm laughing Life at size. I'm laughing at this. Sansa Stark from Game of Thrones. <laughs> like they did the personality quiz on the character. That's interesting. That's funny. Monica from Friends. Oh my god, I'm such a Monica. Okay, now I get it. <laughs> Ew. Also, Cersei Lannister from Game of Thrones. Bitch. I'm just reading through all these characters now, which are hilarious. Uh, Larry from Orange is the New Black. Wow. <laughs> Mrs. Hudson from Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> I could see that. This is interesting. She's just like, mm, okay, well, you all, I'll just make you some tea. Not your mother. <laughs> Not your housekeeper. Did you watch Sherlock Holmes? Nope. With Benedict Cumberbatch. I did not. I love it. And it's so funny because I started watching it with my friend and then Adam and I started watching it together. And Adam is like... Oh, he's like obsessed with ben Benedict Cumberbatch, huh? <laughs> he, because of that show. He's like so into it. And then he got like a little man crush on Benedict Cumberbatch. That's great. Adam is a mediator. He's an INFP. I don't... I'm, I'm trying to get it to, like, do something here so I can read what those things mean. Obviously introvert, right? Yes. What is the N? Nonconformist. Nope, that's not Adam. Nope. Neutral. I don't remember what it, says. it means. I don't know what they mean either. Um, okay, wait, I need to prepare myself. Oh, my gosh, it's been six and a half minutes. <gasps> it's okay. We're just going to go wash it off. 
pause. Nothing, nothing horrible will happen. Oh my gosh, you guys. Oh my gosh. Are you so proud of yourself? <gasps> I'm so proud of you for getting me through it. What? It was nothing. Isn't it cute? This is the coolest thing. I need one for me. I just need it. You could just put first names on it. Blake and Jesse. Or Blake can work on something. <laughs> that is so cool, you guys. It, it does says look pretty great. Shepherd. Established 2017. Oh, I want to see it, like, up against the... Ah, so cute. I'm in love. It turned out really well. I'm in love. Love. And I'm really glad you scooted the shepherd up so it's not directly over the anchor, aren't you? Yep. <laughs> it would have been a little bit spazzy. Because we're so far away. Oh, oh, Make sure oh. we get a good picture. Because we're going to need yeah. it. Well, I need to show my mom, like, right now. Because I just can't wait. We're on lucky number 13, thanks to episode 7, which has been lost to the vaults of time and space. Maybe one day it'll just miraculously show up and then, like... Later when we're, like, just so popular and great, everybody's going to be like, oh, my gosh, this is hilarious. It's early Tab and Jesse. Oh, my gosh. I have to read these now. Beautiful. Back to personality tests. Do you remember what Blake, what you were or what Blake was? Nope. Nope. Now, now I want to know. Now you have to tell me. When you get to work tomorrow, did you take him at work? Yeah. And I will text it to you. Text them to me because now I want to know. Because this is the only part that's the best. Is um, all the people you're like? Yeah. So this is Adam's dear husband's mediators. You may know William Shakespeare. I mean, who even knows anything about William Shakespeare? Adam is just like William Shakespeare. That totally makes sense. He died so long ago. I mean, we know he was like a great writer. But what do we know about William Sp- Shakespeare? He Sp- looks just like Adam. Shakespeare. William Shakespeare's personality. Nothing? I find that hilarious. J.R.R. Tolkien wrote Lord of the Rings. Apparently, Adam has a secret novel yeah, in I him. Yeah, I think he needs to write. Oh, God. Here we go. Bjork. Okay. <laughs> Can you picture uh, dear husband in a swan dress i can't but i think i need All to now six foot five of him halloween costume okay this one i can get on board with johnny depp okay okay julia roberts okay okay lisa kudrow honestly probably one of my favorite actresses i mean who doesn't love phoebe i'd have no idea who that person is alicia keys Okay. Frodo Baggins from The Lord of the Rings. Oh my gosh, Adam is just like Frodo Baggins. I think Adam was meant to be short. He's like, just like Frodo Baggins in spirit and the opposite of Frodo Baggins in size. I feel like Adam might react exactly like Frodo in the case of somebody's putting the whole weight of the world yeah, on, on his shoulders. Yeah, no, I, I feel like personality-wise, I can see okay, that. Okay, okay, Frodo, okay. Um... Anne of Green Gables. Oh. What? Fox Mulder from Exiles. Arwen from Lord of the Rings. Okay. Lots of Lord of the Rings. Oh, Sybil from Downton Abbey. I don't watch that. She was the political sister. They killed her. Spoiler alerts. I think Jessie's in love with her project. I'm in love. I keep looking at it, guys. It did turn out really well. Like, super well. It's so good. It's so good. It's I great. want one for me. Now I have to make one. I just might make a Barstow one in hopes of life. And then you can like make a lovely dinner in it. And when you get to the bottom, just be like, "Oh, Do you have any questions to ask me? Hint, hint. <laughs> okay, we really are going to get out of here. So follow us on the social medias. And like my beautiful casserole dish. It is beautiful. I got the idea on Pinterest, guys. I didn't make it up. Come back uh, next week where we'll be um, doing some other crafts. Boozing and gluing. Well, I won't be boozing. I'll be boozing for the both of us. And Jesse will be gluing. Actually, we did a successful job of that tonight. You did all the crafting and I did all the drinking. (laughs) Woo! (laughs) Party! All right, people. Drink up. We got a craft to do. So do you. You got a craft to do. I can't. Every week.
every time. All right, bye. Bye, Felicia.